Here are the five things you need to think about as a beginner in jujitsu. These five tips are gonna allow you to make progress faster on the mat, help you decrease your risk of injury. And one of the best things about jujitsu and, and learning that skill is that if you're able to apply these five tips right here, not only is your jujitsu experience gonna be much better, but you are gonna be a better jujitsu athlete. And I can't wait to share those with you guys. What's going on guys? My name is Josh Setledge. I am the BJJ Strength Coach. And today I'm gonna to be giving you guys my five tips for beginners in jujitsu. Today is January 4th, 2022. And this marks the five year and one day anniversary of me starting jujitsu. I first started jujitsu on January 3rd of 2017. So it's I've been training for five years consistently in jujitsu. I spent some time wrestling before that. And given that it's my five year anniversary of jujitsu this month, I wanted to give you guys five tips. These are kind of like five things that I wish I knew before I started jujitsu, but really any beginner in jujitsu or wrestling could benefit from these. Before we get too deep into the video, I do want to let you guys know that I have a free four week strength program that I'd love to send you guys. There's no strings attached. You can just click the link in the description below. My goal for this year in 2022 is to help 1000 grapplers win more matches and get injured less. And so I created a free four week strength program that I'd like to send you. That's going to help you with your jujitsu and your wrestling. You can click the link in the description below to download that for free. Five tips that I would give any beginner starting jujitsu. These are also kind of the tips that I wish I knew right out, right out the gate when I started jujitsu. And I get that my experience is a little bit different than maybe some of you guys because I did come from wrestling. So I was kind of already familiar with grappling a little bit, but the culture of jujitsu is very different from wrestling, which was new to me. Tip number one, ask good questions. Jujitsu is a never ending journey. You are always going to be looking for ways to get better. I've heard some people who have literally been black belts for over 20 years say that they're, they are still asking questions and learning new techniques and learning new moves and learning new details about jujitsu that keep the learning process fun and exciting and engaging. So you're kind of always chasing this unreachable goal of learning everything in jujitsu. Now, that being said, just starting out in jujitsu when you're a white belt, it may be really intimidating because you don't understand these positions, you don't understand these words, you don't understand what the heck is going on when someone is going upside down or they're wrapping their legs around your head and your arm or they're spinning underneath you and then getting behind you all of a sudden. So one of the best ways that you can start to make progress faster is just to ask good questions. Now, I think sometimes there is almost some hesitancy to ask good questions because we don't wanna be that guy or that girl that asks a dumb question. But let's be honest. If you're a white belt, everybody knows that you're just a beginner. Everybody knows that you're not an expert at jujitsu. When you have that white belt around your waist or any belt around your waist for that matter, you should always be looking to ask good questions so you can have a better understanding of the techniques that your professor or instructor is demonstrating for you and getting a better understanding of how jujitsu works from a movement perspective. Why do we do things like a hip escape? Why do we do things like leg pummeling? Ask good questions. You are gonna be able to make so much more progress in a much faster time if you ask good questions. Now, tip number two, if something isn't working, doing it harder or faster usually is not the, the answer. Jujitsu is a very interesting sport and activity in the sense that there is so much technique. There is a lot of different things you need to do to put yourself in the right position to be able to do certain techniques properly. And one thing that I wish I knew when I started jujitsu was that because I'm strong and because I was a pretty good athlete coming into jujitsu, I kind of defaulted to if, oh, if this move isn't working, then I'm just going to try to do it harder. Or I'm going to going to try to do it fast. I wasn't really dialing in the technique and the position. And a lot of times that resulted in me getting really frustrated because I would do a technique or I try a technique and it wasn't working because I didn't have the right position. So I just tried to do it harder. I'd get exhausted. I'd get gassed out. I'd end up getting my guard passed or something and then getting submitted. I felt like that held me back a lot in my development because my default was like, if you're lifting weights, I'm a huge meathead. I mean, this channel is all about helping athletes get strong for jujitsu and wrestling, but kind of like when you're lifting weights, if you struggle on a certain weight, you know, if you get stuck on bench, 
press as hard as you can and do it fast. And then you can, you know, kind of grind through that sticking point. I took the same approach to jujitsu in the beginning and it really wasn't very helpful to me. It really held me back in my opinion. And the other thing too, is that sometimes depending on who you're rolling with, you do put your partner at risk when you just try to do things harder or faster if they aren't working. Take the time to understand the position, take the time to understand what you need to do to be able to do that technique effectively, and then apply the appropriate amount of force or the appropriate amount of effort, the, the appropriate amount of speed to be able to do that technique successfully. Tip number three, shut your mouth. Now that may sound a little crazy, but this is something that I've been talking about for a long time, for the past couple years now. I wish I learned this one secret method so much earlier than I did in uh, 2018 and 2019. But that is to breathe in and out through your nose. Focus on nasal breathing. Now, when you're rolling as a beginner, it's gonna feel like a dogfight every single time. Sometimes you're rolling, you're just trying not to get submitted, you're just trying not to get your guard pass, and you're getting smashed, and it's uncomfortable, and it's exhausting because you, you aren't very efficient with your movements. Something that's gonna not only allow you to have better conditioning on the mat, but also allow you to think a little bit better and not be such a spaz as a, as a white belt is to focus on nasal breathing, breathing in and out through your nose. This is something I didn't start really focusing on until I was already a blue belt. And as soon as I discovered it and gave it a try for about two weeks, I immediately saw some big improvements in my ability to control my energy and conserve energy during my live training rounds. I was able to think a little bit more and I didn't get caught up in the frenzy of just trying to just spaz everything, you know, be a button smasher and street fighter, if you will. And I was actually able to roll better because I could slow things down a little bit, I wasn't as exhausted, I wasn't as tired, and I could think a lot more. And thinking, what you're thinking in your head as you're rolling is very important in jujitsu. Thinking about your next couple moves, thinking about the next steps you're gonna take to be able to get to someone's back, to be able to sweep somebody, to be able to pass someone's guard. So really focus on nasal breathing. You'll notice that it's gonna be very difficult at first, but do the best you can when you're drilling the technique. So you're drilling some butterfly sweeps, maybe you're drilling some type of, you know, uh, leg weave pass or some sort of guard pass. Focus on doing the technique portion of your class, nasal breathing in and out of your nose. And then when you start live rolling, do the best you can to keep your mouth shut and breathe in and out through your nose. It's gonna do wonders for your conditioning. It's gonna do wonders in your ability to slow things down just a little bit so you can think a little bit more about your techniques, making sure that you're doing the techniques properly so you can be more effective on the mat. Now the fourth tip that I would give any beginner is if you're sore, go to class anyway. This is something that I had learned in wrestling because we didn't have the choice to not go to wrestling when we were sore. We just went anyways. A lot of times I, I with some of the athletes that I work with who are a little bit newer to jujitsu and even some of the new jujitsu athletes that I meet when I train um, at the current school that I train at Castle Warner Jiu Jitsu here in Sacramento, they'll say like, oh yeah, I didn't train yesterday because I was really sore. And I get it, we've all been there. We've all been super sore. We've all had a tough day of training where our neck is sore, our back is sore, our elbows hurt, our knees hurt. That doesn't mean you should just skip class. The biggest lesson I learned in the current state of the world is that every time I skip class because I was sore or because I was tired or because I was feeling a little bogged down, when we were in that lockdown period where I couldn't train for about three to four months, I regretted every single time I skipped training because I was sore. I regretted every single time I skipped training because I was tired. Let's be honest, I've never been to any jujitsu class and I would imagine that you've never been to any jujitsu class where you felt worse after class. Sure, sometimes we feel terrible going into class, but afterwards, when have we ever felt worse? I always feel better when I go to jujitsu, every single time. If I'm sore, if I'm banged up, if I'm achy, sure, maybe I'm not gonna roll out of 100%. Maybe I won't even roll at all. I'll just focus on some really laid back drilling and technique. And that's okay too. But I still made it to class, still saw my teammates, still was able to get on the mat, move around a little bit, work up a little bit of a sweat, kind of get the blood flow moving. And that kind of brings me into my next tip. Tip number five, 
make sure you're focusing on recovery. Jiu-Jitsu can be a very taxing activity. If you're not in good shape coming into Jiu-Jitsu, you may actually be pretty surprised with how taxing Jiu-Jitsu may be. And so focusing on recovery is very important because it's gonna allow you to recover from training sessions so you can be more physically prepared to go back to training. You don't make progress off of what you do on the mat or what you do in the gym, only from what you can recover from. If you do one Jiu-Jitsu session a week and you are so banged up and you're so sore afterwards and everything's aching, it's gonna be really hard for you to wanna go back to jujitsu the next day. And I, I said in tip number four, you should go just to get a little bit of work in. But if you're always sore and you can only train like at a, at a hard level or, or a full effort level about once a week, that's going to really slow down your progress. You want to make sure that you're able to recover from that hard session so that maybe somewhere later in the week, you could do another hard session. What a hard session looks like for me may look completely different than what a hard session looks like for you. And not every training session needs to be DEF CON 10, super hard, super intense. But it's good to have some days where it's like, okay, this day is going to be my hard rolling day. I'll take a couple chill days at jujitsu to recover. And then this day over here, two or three days later, I'm having another hard training day. And it's good to map things out like that. Just to review, here are the five tips that every jujitsu beginner or white belt should know. Ask good questions. If something isn't working, doing it harder or faster probably is not the answer. Shut your mouth. Make sure that even if you're feeling sore and you're feeling pretty banged up, go to class anyway. You're, you're gonna appreciate going to class and stacking up more and more mat time. And then number five, make sure that you're recovering properly between training sessions. Part of being able to recover quickly from jujitsu and being able to protect your body as you're doing this amazing sport and activity is to get stronger and to help you guys get stronger so you can win more matches and get injured less. I have a free four week strength program I'd love to send you. All you need to do is just click the link in the description below. You can download that program for free. I'm super excited to share these five tips with you just because jujitsu has done so much for me and it's given so much uh, it's added so much value to my life. And so if you're starting jujitsu at this point and watching this video, these are my five tips for you to be able to continue enjoying jujitsu, make progress faster, and be a better grappling athlete. That being said, you guys can follow me on Instagram at Joshua Settledge, and I'll catch you guys later. Peace.